Screen Actors. In this video, you're going to learn how to find and define all of your playable beats in every scene that you perform. And when you do, it's going to quickly make you a more interesting actor to watch. Do you think that that might help you to get more gigs? You bet it will. I'm Louis DiBianco and this is my channel, Screen Acting Success. This is where you come every Friday for more tips, techniques and secrets to help you become a more compelling working screen actor in demand. If this is your first time here, click subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. Stick around to the end because I'm going to be giving away some free training that you're not going to want to miss. Now this video today is a supplement to my most popular video, which is called How to Find Beats in a Script. It's gotten thousands of views. People get a lot of value from it. You're going to see a link to that one toward the end of this video. You're also going to find a link below in the description. And I suggest that you watch the two of them together. Well, you can't watch them at the same time, obviously, but the two as I said, supplement each other. They each take a slightly different perspective on beats and what you gain from both of them is, is going to arm you with everything that you need to become a really captivating screen actor. Now, why should we even bother to study and master beats in a scene? This script analysis, because it's going to cultivate and develop for you the actor's mindset. What does that mean? It means that you're going to learn to read a script so that your eye goes directly to the things that are playable and they're not on the surface. They're going to be hidden behind the dialogue, but you're going to be able to quickly, even instinctively find those things incorporate them into your work and show up as a pro every single time. Can't talk about beats without discussing um, units of action. And we can't talk about units of action without talking about our good friend Konstantin Stanislavski. You know, that dude who was born in the 1860s in Russia, who gave us the system that became the method that has influenced and still influences great actors today. Stanislavski had a marvelous way of reading scripts. And by the way, it's important to emphasize that most people don't know how to read scripts. When, uh, I didn't know how to read a script before I really got involved in acting because we're taught to read books fiction, nonfiction. But when we're reading books, that's passive reading. We're reading for what? Information. You can't play information. When you're reading as an actor, you're reading to find the dramatic action, which will enable you to make that script immediately come to life and make your characters rich, full and compelling almost hypnotic to watch. So that's what you're going to develop that the mindset and the eye to cut through what is just information in a script and go right to the heart of what makes it flesh and blood that is exciting to watch. Mr. Stanislavski looked at a script and he would tear it apart or analyze it in terms of what he called units of action. They were large units of action. <laughs> large units of action. Those are the acts and the scenes. But for you, the actor, there are smaller, even sometimes tiny, maybe even imperceptible, invisible units of action that we call beats. Mr. Stanislavski called them bits, B-I-T-S. But hey, let's cut him some slack. He was Russian. And you know, when he spoke English, he had a colorful um, accent. So I'm sure what happened when he was discussing this with passion, he said, we're going to learn how to find the beats. 
He meant bits, but the beats. Hey, anyway, we have beets. Luckily, he didn't give us the beets that we eat because well, you can't play those. You got to eat them. When you're finding beets in a scene, what you're finding is the dynamic of action, reaction, which is what drama and all acting is about. We must make an important distinction here between actions and activities. An activity in a scene is simply a physical task that you are performing, that you're doing as you are moving toward fulfilling your dramatic action. Think of your action in a scene. The main action that defines the entire scene is the same thing as your intention. It's what you are fighting for. You define it with a verb, an active verb, with the word to in front of it, to um, persuade, to coerce, to humor, to charm, etc. Now, what we're going to do is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to learn about this by actually looking at a scene that you could put on its feet, and I wish that you do, that you work with a partner and do it, and it's a one-page scene. This kind of scene is called an open or contentless scene because all it gives you is the dialogue. And the dialogue, even if you are line perfect, is not what is going to make you make the scene come alive. It's what's hidden beneath the dialogue. And it also is an open scene because it doesn't tell you who the characters are, what their relationship is, or what the given circumstances are. All of those things are choices that you're going to make. And for everybody watching, there will be a totally different scene. So what I've done here is just taken the dialogue and I'm just going to, here it is on the, on the screen. I'm going to read it, not for performance, but just so that you can hear what A and B sound like as they're interacting with each other. Hi, hello, how's everything? Fine, I guess. Do you know what time it is? No, not exactly. Don't you have a watch? Not on me. Well, well what? What did you do last night? What do you mean? What did you do last night? Nothing. Nothing? I said nothing. I'm sorry I asked. That's all right. Okay. What we do pick up from just hearing that is that character A is suspicious and mistrustful of character B and this could, would be a good guess to say that B is probably holding something back from A. Now, I've created a series of action verbs that are beats for each and every line of the scene. And when you look at them together, you will see that there is a dramatic story going on, a dramatic action. Now, to be clear, each beat is a different action, but your action, overriding action for the scene, is your intention. Your intention in the scene won't change from line to line, but your tactics will, and your tactics are the individual beat actions that you're going to see on the screen now. So let's look at how that plays out. When A says hi, simply to engage. And B meets A on A's level, says hello, engages right back. How's everything? Could be a probe trying to see what B will reveal, but B doesn't give anything away. B says fine. I guess. I would say that action is to evade the probe. 
Do you know what time it is? Now A is beginning to challenge. Still, B holds his or her ground. No, not exactly. Disarms the challenge. Don't you have a watch? Well, A seems to be moving in. We could say trying to corner B. Successful? No. This is not on me. Evades being cornered. Well, now A is applying pressure and B doesn't take the bait. Well, what? Thwarts the pressure. What did you do last night is the first direct question. Not dancing around it, but actually saying, this is what I really want to know. That I would call a confrontation. The action there, the tactic is to confront. And again, B holds his or her ground. What do you mean? Diverts the confrontation. And A repeats the confrontational line. What did you do last night? By repeating it, I would say it's a barrage. He's barraging or she's barraging. And again, B resists nothing. And now A won't let up. At this stage, I would say the next beat is to bully. Nothing, he asks, or she asks, I said nothing. That's a strong answer, so I call it to retaliate. And it has a good effect on A because A goes, I'm sorry I asked. Call that a retreat, and B goes, that's all right. Call that to pardon. Later on, after you've watched this video, Look at that, those one word action verbs. And you'll begin to see playable actions. You'll find a playable scene. You'll find the dynamic that you're looking for at every single scene. And we can say that a scene, we can define a scene as a battle. A scene is a battle between two opposing forces. That's what makes it dramatic. That's what creates conflict. I'm going to stop for a second and define beat just for the purposes of this video. And a beat is an action initiated by your character, an action that you initiate toward another character in the scene, in the script, and or an action that the other character initiates toward you. And that creates the give and take, the dynamic of action reaction that makes a scene an interesting battle. Let's take this analogy a step further and give it a visual, strong visual image that will help you really appreciate what dramatic action really is about. Let's look at fencing, the sport of fencing. When two people duel with swords. I chose it because it's easy to see, it's clean, it's elegant, and there's definitely a give and take, give and take. And the language used in the sport is perfect for an actor's mind. The initial aggressive move by one character is called the thrust and the counter move, the warding off of that thrust, that attack is called a parry. P-A-R-R-Y. So the give and take of a, a duel, which is a scene, is thrust Parry, thrust, parry, give and take, back and forth. See the image on the screen and print that into your mind. Whenever you're looking at a script, 
this will make the, the script immediately and the scene immediately take on uh, urgency, importance, a dynamic, actu active quality. A duel is not passive. And when we're watching a fencing match, it can get pretty exciting. I mean, yeah, the people are padded. They're not going to really get injured, but the battle feels real and it's rapid fire back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, thrust, parry, thrust, parry, and we're engaged. That's the image you want for whenever you're performing a scene. So we've looked at what makes an actor's mindset, how to define a beat, how to distinguish between actions and activities, and then we actually broke it down with a real scene for you. And finally, this powerful visual image of a fencing match, a duel, to help you really get inside of your body and your mind what acting is about. When this really lands for you, you're going to get to that point that they call unconscious competence. That's mastery. That's when you're making the right choices as an actor without thinking about what to do. Choices that are compelling because they're playable, because they have high stakes. And man, you are on your way toward building a really successful career. If you've gotten value from this, then definitely please leave your takeaway in the comments below. It's going to inspire more actors and uh, it'll also help more actors just find the video. And if you haven't subscribed already, do it now and give the video a thumbs up. I promise you some free training. On the screen, you see a copy of the ebook I wrote. It really is an ultimate guide to self-taping. It has everything from acting tips to recommended gear to important information about how to light and get the uh, best sound. And I give you a diagram of my actual studio that I'm shooting in right now. I encourage you to use that diagram to replicate it because it's going to take your self tapes to a whole other professional level. The link is below. The book is free. Download it right after you watch this video and start applying what you learn. You're also going to find a link below to my latest online course, Self Taping Mastery. That takes a deeper dive into self taping and it gives you the opportunity to interact with me because I'm going to be in every single module holding you by the hand, taking you step by step, and you can reach out to me with questions that I will answer. Also, when you check out what I'm offering with the course, you're going to notice bonuses, and one of them is a completely separate online course in live auditions. It covers everything from what to do before the auditions, as you travel to the audition, when you're in the waiting room with other actors, where you can be taken out of the game, when you're inside with the auditioners, and what to do on the way home. I sell that course separately for $199. It's yours absolutely free when you enroll and uh, self-taping mastery today. It's my gift to you. At least check out what I'm offering. If it isn't for you, well, definitely get the book and start applying that. And if it is for you, I'll have the opportunity and the honor to become, you know, to get to know you better and become your guide toward a, a very successful career. I always love to end with this important reminder, which is actually a theme in this whole video today, that the dialogue is important, but it's secondary always to the life that lives beneath the lines and in between them. So whenever you have a script in your hands, always feel it first, then say it. When you do both, you'll probably mean it, and then the chances are that you'll book it. Feel it, say it, mean it, book it, go out, Create a stellar on-camera career for yourself and please let me know about it so that I can celebrate with you and share your win with the world.